everybody, this is Jason and Brian from Death Club, and we're here with Premier Guitars Big Five. What's my favorite bass? Actually, I, I generally prefer P basses, I've been playing that ever since I first started playing in pumping hardcore bands when I was 12, but um, for, for Death Club, I've actually recently been using this American Original 70s J bass, which uh, I, I didn't think, I've never really been that partial to the jazz basses, uh, especially not in, in heavier music where I like the, the mid-range and the growl to really cut through, but uh, just the, the, the uh, Death Club has a lot of like kind of higher like parts higher on the neck and um, kind of almost incorporating like a at times like a, a new order style of playing but in like a hardcore band. But um, I find that it, it it gives me you know I, I just really like the clarity of you know, past the twelfth fret and um, and I found like a, a, a nice warm growl that I out of the J bass that I still really like. So that's what I've been using in Death Club lately. I'm partial to Fenders. I've been using a Jazz Master. I have an American Professional. Uh, I've always been sort of like a Sonic Youth fan. And it allows me to make a lot of noise and sort of cut through everything. Uh, it's not muddy. I don't really use humbuckers in this fan, just so I could be nice and bright and sort of cut through the mix. So I typically use Fenders. I do have a Kurt Cobain signature series that I sometimes use because it does have humbuckers just to kind of cheat my way through things at times. But that's usually just a studio guitar. My life, my main guitar is the Jazz Master. I just want to be as noisy as possible. Yeah. What's my Desert Island album? Uh, for me personally, I'd go with like Nirvana. I'm plugged in New York, so I could, you know, sort of relax a little bit, I guess. You know, it's either that or like in utero. And if I really want to go, you know, crazy on an island or something, I think it has to be one album. It has to keep you sane a little bit, you know. In utero uh, has a lot of like, you know, weird guitar chords might make you a little bit angry, but it also has a lot of pretty songs, you know. Uh, Unplugged, I think, would be really chill, but I think kind of depends on the island, you know. If it's an island that has coconuts and you have, you know, <laughs> whatever you could eat a lot, then, you know, sure, unplug. If it's something that you got to like fight off people and, you know, chase pigs around or something, then probably in utero. <laughs> It's hard to pick one. I think that is for everybody. But I would, uh, I would probably say if I had to listen to one band forever, it would be the Ramones. And my favorite would be Leave Home, but uh, that might get a little stale. So I'd probably pick the the compilation album from the what was it, 88 Mania, I think it was called, because that has all the hits from all the records up to that point. Um, you got you got fun, boppy songs. You got love songs, you know, songs to cry to, and the greatest punk albums, the greatest punk songs of all time. So I would say Mania. What's my fa my least favorite guitar or bass culture pet peeve? If I was to pinpoint it uh, from my vantage point, I think it's just kind of a hesitancy to embrace guitar in in genres that are that were typically uh, more electronic based and using guitar in ways that I find to be far more exciting than like kind of the 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 typical um, you know shredding that we've we've loved forever, which I also love. But I find uh, like the way guitar is used. In, uh, in in hip hop and electronic music, and my producers like Mike Be Dean and Kenny Beats are like, um, you know, it's almost closer to a, like a the noise and shoegaze and and, and uh, you know these more experimental genres that I that I grew up with. But seeing it in like kind of a pop cultural in pop culture, it's only happening in those genres. Uh, so yeah, I think that um, that the, the, the kind of the hesitancy to, to embrace that in, in within typical MI is probably the my biggest pet peeve. What's my biggest guitar pet peeve? I think uh, sort of the Nam culture of the shreddy metal guitarists. Like, uh, I grew up playing guitar and not really wanting to talk about it a lot. You know, it's just like everybody plays guitar, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I really just liked creating sounds with my pedals. And then you just get all these people that like can shred, you know, circles around you and it's like, it's fun, but it doesn't have soul. I just always thought like rhythm players were better. And even when I go to concerts, I don't even look at guitarists. I look at drummers mostly, you know, rhythmic things like that. But. Which bass hero of mine might shock my thing? It's probably someone like Sting. Um, you know, like I, when I was learning bass, um, you know, at first I went through like all the, like kind of the standards of, I mean, kids my age, like all the Operation Ivy and Rains and stuff and like learned like how to play fancy. And it wasn't until like, until I really got into the police, like um, maybe a year or two later, when I actually first saw a live VHS of them playing with the dam and like that, that kind of shaped me as a bass player because on, on both ends, but Sting just has so much, you know, put so much space into all of his music. And uh, with a, even with a band like Death Club, you know, that's just going in your face all the time. Like, uh, you know, oftentimes, like if what I, what I, if what I don't play is, is more important than what I do, um, I'll probably be better about that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say that uh, Sting definitely was the first bass player. So, 
to get me to start thinking about um, well, playing less or choosing when I do play. I mean, I do love like Nels Klein. I think he's a really interesting guitarist. Uh, Jim Capilongo, uh, sort of blues, jazz guys, you know, stuff like that. But they also do like atonal sort of jazz and experimental things. And they do things a lot with their, you know, pedals and effects that are just sort of, you know, mind blowing. What's my secret weapon? Um, but probably the only piece of gear that I, I always will replace if anything ever happens to it, if I, if I lose it, whatever, is the, the Sans Amp. I have it right here, actually. This is the version I always use, just a little sound box. You know, if I'm borrowing amps or backlining or, um, you know, don't have a my break and I'm comfortable with whatever, the Sans Amp can always guarantee me uh, a good sound. And I can, you know, I, I can EQ it the way I like. Um, and yeah, I've been, every year as I've played, a lot of different bass amps, and that's the one thing that's come with me. So I used to play a lot of Sun. Um, I used to play the, you know, a lot of Amp SVD4 Pros and then SVD Classics. Um, and then now using Super Basement and the Sand Sands come with me the entire time. So I would say that's like if there's one thing that defines my sound, it's the Sand Sands. Uh, what's my secret weapon? Um, I've been really into my guitarist tonight, uh, Tommy, the other guitarist in Death Club. We got really into Banana Na effects. It's like a Japanese pedal, it's called a Mandala. And it's a glitch pedal. This guy. So it's kind of like a sample uh, looper or something. So you could sort of add octaves and they'll, you know, sample a, a millisecond of it or whatever, depending how fast you hit it. Stuff like that. Yes.